Hello YouTube and welcome back to Allie's Wonderland Creations. I am Alice Serafin and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Well, I have to tell you guys, I am like laughing at myself because the cards I'm going to create in this video are not what I intended to do today. Um, I wanted to finish my paper pumpkin and I'm like, oh, let's case a card for paper pumpkin. And I start thinking, oh, I can do these in their colors. I can, I can change this up a bit. Oh, y'all <laughs> totally didn't work with paper pumpkin stamps because I just wanted to use the sentiments. I'm going to have to work on that. But, but once I got going, I, I'm like, I have to do this video because this is going to come out really cute. So I want to erase a little bit here and I'm going to write <coughs> excuse me 10 up here because that's paper pumpkin that's the video I left out on so I know but I want to put down I really um I have about 10 people so far on my mailing list and this is my email address if you want to be on my mailing list this is just for cards this is new advertising i'm not pushing stamping up products i'm not selling them to you i want to share the cards i create with you my subscribers because you make this so worth my while to share this with you your comments are so awesome they mean so much to me and I think it's just my way of saying thank you. So if you would like to be on my um, monthly mailing list, um, can't promise everybody gets a card every month, but depending on how many people would like to receive them, I'll draw names once a month when I do my mailings and mail you a card that I created. So that's just my little way of saying thank you. So like I said, we are casing a card from the mini catalog. I'm going to show you. I've had my eye on this one right here. It's a slimline card. Um, it's outside of my wheelhouse as far as um, the layering of the pieces. Um, I'm not going to use their twine, but I've, I've gone put my little spin on it, but I really like this. So we're going to do two versions. We're doing a very tall slim line card, which will fit in a long legal size envelope, and then one that will sit in a regular standard size mailing envelope. So this is the card we're going to create. It's on page 53. Yep. And I said this was not what I started out uh, doing today. So we're going to go. I'm even doing some embossing. I don't know if my embossing folders are current, but it's the only one I had besides the timber one. So once again, let's go through the slimline card. Card number one is a basic white card base. Let me show you. Hopefully I don't lose any of my pieces. So this is that you know, just those little cheap box of envelopes you can get. I did a card base, which is six by six, scored at three, and it fits in there nicely. So that is our card base. You'll need layer number one is Sahara Sand, three by six. You will need two of these. One we're going to emboss, and I'm actually going to emboss on camera with my little mini machine from Stamping Up, which is so wonderful. I do love it. Then next, da -da -da -da, you are going to need five pieces of DSP. Cut it one and a half right here, one and a half by two. Mine are from the Retired Neutrals, and I have um, Night of Navy, Mossy Meadow, and Mary Merlot. Those are my choices. And then I have two pieces of basic white that are three three quarters of a strip by two and a quarter. You're going to need two and a scrap of crumb cake. Yes, crumb cake. Here it is for our wee little bunny and the punch. So my little bunny's already done. I'm going to do one on camera. I've already punched it. Silly of me. I didn't stamp it first, but we're going to see how that goes. Okay. So card number two, this is the tall one. This fits in that legal size, very large envelope. Um, so for that card base, let's see, it is nine and one eighth by seven and a half. So nine and one eighth, seven and a half, and then it is scored at three and three quarters. 
and you will need two pieces of cardstock minus the Harris hand three and a quarter by eight and a half you will need two and I'm going to walk you through see the embossing folder where did that one go to is it in here yes the embossing folder I am using is the greenery it's the only one I have besides the timber um, I have other embossing folders but I know they're all retired so to get this to where it fit this long piece of paper what I did is I stuck it in here ran it through the machine then I turned it actually around and and it worked surprisingly well um, let me see if I can get it so right about here and I'm going to show you on my machine what I did because I didn't want to run it all the way through again so let me bring in that baby machine of it so to do a regular there's my other embossing folder we're going to be using so you need plate one and for regular embossing folders plate three it the stamping up smart they give you instructions on how to do this if you pay attention so I'm using the light gray plate and the white plate um, plates one and three so what I did is where's my mark did it already go away okay well, I'll show you again so white plate down it shows you how to do it plate number one down and that's the swipe plate so plate number one down then I took my embossing folder I don't I put it this way and I took this and I laid it right there and then I took my little pen because it washes right off and I marked right where my cardstock you see this here I just marked roughly where that ended and then I run it through the machine and I stopped when I saw my mark and went backwards and pulled it out. And that's all there was to doing that. That was quick and simple. So next we're going to use that other part of the greenery embossing folder. Hmm. I never got to the DSP, did I? No. So here we go. This is the three by six piece, which fits in here beautifully. Let me just line it up. Even if it's wonky, we're going to tear it. It's not going to matter. We're going to use a water pen. So if you're having problems with this, offset your plates, meaning don't have this all the way at the front. Bring it back some, then put this on, offset it just a bit and it sucks it up so crank 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 and we're done and i'm going to close that up it's a good thing my little dog ain't up here she hates that snapping noise so here we go and there is our embossing all done so that's for our first card i just showed it to you Kind of like, still can't believe what I've done. I want to show you how I store my mini machine. So I have this little tray from the dollar store. Little organization tray. I keep all my plates, the instructions, all in here. Not the embossing folder. All of that goody stuff goes in this little tray. And my little machine fits in here and it's handy dandy. And that's how I store that. Just if you're wondering, and it goes on a shelf in my room. So we did <laughs> the Sahara stand for card number two. I just did all the embossing for you out of sequence, but I still can't believe that I'm doing this card. Okay, so we need five, no, we need six pieces of DSP. You'll need six, one by two and three quarters. I still went with the neutrals and I chose to use Mary Merlot basic gray, night and navy, and old olive. So those are my choices. And now for our basic white strips, you'll need three and they're three 
quarters of an inch by two and one half. And for this bunny, because I already had these, I already had them punched out because I was sitting here playing with the Easter bunny a while ago. And I have this little baggie <laughs> full of these little Easter bunnies in here. I was having a good time. So these are craft ones and you're going to need two of those. And we're going to use some jute twine for these cards. So shall we get started? Yeah, let, let's play. Let's play. That is what I'm doing. I'm still having, this is so not what I wanted. Not what I, not that I didn't want to. It's just not the card it was meant to be. And it cracks me up that I did that. We are going to use um, Mary Merlot to stamp for our, we're doing card, I should probably do card number one. Card number one was the small card, wasn't it? Um, six by six, yes. So these are going over for the large one. Bring back our small card pieces, our card base, so, and that. We already have our bunny done for this card. So we have our little envelope, our six by six scored at three. Our first layer of Sahara sand is gonna go directly onto this card. Nothing fancy about it. You can put the glue on there however you choose. Me, sometimes I like to plop my card when I'm covering the whole card front, use my tabletop to get it evenly on there. So that's step one. We're going to set that aside. Now we have our piece of embossed. Now I have one of the water painters and I'm going to start off getting lots of water on here because in our card, see how they have this torn? It is so much easier with one of these, or you can use a paintbrush, which I have done in the past. You can use a paintbrush, get it wet, and go along the edge of your paper. So if you don't have one of these, get a cheap paintbrush from the dollar store. I'm getting a lot of water here because it takes a lot, and I am going down the edge, and to get it kind of that, I don't want to do a straight tear. I want a wonky tear, so I'm adding quite a bit of water. It's going to help those fibers um, re be easier to tear. So now you can pull either towards you or away from you. And this one still needs some more water. So I'm going to flip it over, grab some more, and I'm going to paint with water. Yep. <laughs> so here we go. Now it should be ready. Yep. It just makes it easier to tear. You don't need as much force. And I am pulling from the back. I am pushing and pulling away. That's just how I do it. So there's one side done. Now we're going to turn it over. And we're going to repeat. So I'm going to get some water out. I'm not laying this in the water. I'm just having it here. And I'm going to paint down the side. Very little rustic style little card. I already know I need to flip it over and do it again. So here we go. Get a little bit more. Just makes it easier to tear. All right. So I'm going to pick it up now. And I'm going to start pushing and pulling towards me. Now, I think. This is one of my favorite things to do, and I don't know why I haven't done it more often, but um, I do like cards like this, and I like to sponge the edges. We are not doing that today, but I do like to do that. Um, finding, remembering all the things I used to love to do so much. So I'm going to close up my water painter. I'm going to dry my glass top off a little bit more, making sure it's nice and dry. So... In this look, you're going to see how theirs is torn, ours is torn, and so now this is going to get glued down. We could put this actually up on dimensionals, but we're not going to. <laughs> we could. I can start changing my mind in a heartbeat, and 
just love love the you can do it however with whatever embossing folder you have try it so there is it our card it would have you know and on the next one we'll do some sponging because it would have given a little bit more definition on the sides but that's okay so we have our elements for our card and I know how they're gonna go let me bring in the photo so you can see I am choosing because you know I'm gonna put a twist on it my way for this particular one I am NOT gonna put them cockeyed I just laid them out here like so we maybe I just liked it straighter and to tell you the truth I'm thinking now that we need to do a little tear on here so let me scoot this over i want to tear each of these edges so i'm going to paint both front and back and they will all be different and this is dsp it's not cardstock so it should tear pretty easy yes Let me see do you... okay I'm gonna tell you what I don't like this white in the thing so I need to get my little package I'm trying to stick this in there y'all that's not gonna work Alice okay um we need to get another piece because that is not gonna work so here are my neutrals these were on the clearance wrap the retired ones um, I can't afford to buy a whole bunch of all the in colors, but when those came on the clearance rack, I was like, I'm taking that opportunity because the design is the only difference. The colors are all the same. So I need to cut another one at just making sure it two and a half because that green is not going to do it, but we can do something. See how they used a punch here. We can do that. So two and a half is what my measurement is. I just want a little bit taken off. So in, I don't have this punch, but I have this punch and it's got that deckled thing so we can make that work. That piece is gonna go back in the package. And I'm thinking I can cut two pieces of DSP at a time. So I'm gonna stick these two together. I'm gonna stick one end in like so and for me it's okay if it's not straight as this card was not meant to be perfect okay so we're gonna do a one strip at a time I just can't we're taking off the tiniest bit and all of them are not going to be the exact same measurement there it is but it's going to have the same effect. There's one. Just sticking it in the hole there. Two. Snipping off just a hair eh, of them. I wonder if I'm going to have to do this on the other ones. We'll have to see what it looks like. There's that one. And this one. And our Knight of Navy is our last one to do. I had this out because I originally thought to do it and I wasn't sure. But now I am. <laughs> Okay, and now we don't have that little white from the tear. That white, I don't want to sponge it, and I don't like that showing. So, Knight of Navy is going in the center. Then our two Mossy Meadow colors. And then our Mary Merlot. And I do like them kind of not too cockeyed, but 
you know, not straight. I, I do kind of like that. So I've got some of this jute twine. And I know I'm going to need quite a bit. Let's see, before my things get wet. Let me cut some of this. Because I want to unravel it and fray it a bit. So I'm just going to cut a length. And this is just from the dollar store, hardware store, wherever you get jute. I'm going to start tearing that. Those fibers apart. Unravel it. Twist and pull as you go. They wove it together. I'm unweaving it. Unweaving it. That should be the word. All right. Because I want it to be thinner. And I don't want baker's twine. The smaller amount you have, the less time you have to spend here doing this. There we go. I just like that natural bit of look. So we have our two sentiment strips. One is going up here, which we will have to cut with the little punch. So let's do that to make it fit. We need to trim all the little edges. So there's that one. And hopefully I can still get the sentiments on here. There's that one. Ah, oh, cute. I still can't believe this is what... This is not what I came out to my stamp room to create. It's just what what happened. And sometimes these come out to be some of the best and some of my favorite things. But I just have to laugh because it was so not. Okay, so this shorter one is going to go up top. And where are my sayings? I'm wondering if Happy Easter will still fit. Nope, but we can do... Enjoy all the little moments. That's what we're going to do. Um, an Easter treat for you. It's a new day. I'm going to pick out that it's a new day. Because that will fit. So let's see. I haven't even used that one yet. So there it is. That will fit on that short little one. But I have a block for it is the question. Let's get these stamped. So it's a new day. Mary Merlot is a color. Could do Night of Navy. You could choose any color you like. Um, I would like a scratch piece of paper. And I have one. So because I just haven't used this particular one, give it a little twist. It's a new day on our basic white. I have a new ink pad here. Oh, yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. And enjoy all the little moments. And I tell you what, this is one of my favorites. I want to use it in my scrapbooking because that is what life is all about enjoying all of the little moments in life and being there all right i'm not going to close up the ink pad because we're going to need it again now these two are going to get up on dimensionals they each need two that did it again i wonder why they're doing that Okay, this one, enjoy all the little moments, is going on our bottom piece of Mary Merlot. It's a new day is going on the top one. See, hey, look. I'm going to have to see why they're doing that.
And then those two, we're going to start with those two placements. And I kind of do like the idea of doing just a bit wonky. Not all the way wonky, okay? Just a little wonky. Meaning they're not going to be perfectly square. So we're going to tilt it to the side just a bit like that because those are all wonky. This one we're going to tilt. Let me see if that one's going that way. This one's going to go that way. This one's going to be straight. This way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. Oh, cute. Cute, cute, cute. Our twine is going to go on our mossy meadows. So this one. Oh, and I even like that that is off. So not me. So, so not my normal cup of tea. Where's all my twine? So here is my jute twine. I am just going to take it and wrap it several times. Oh, I do love that. Very rustic looking little card. I need some scotch tape. There we go. And some scissors, wherever they went to. My thinking fingers. I know, I do it all the time. My daughter tells me, Mom, you talk with your hands. It annoys her, I think. <laughs> she loves me to pieces, but when we're out in public, she's like, Mom, you're doing the hand thing. I'm like, oh, okay. So let's see, cut this and cut that. And we'll use those on here. there. Fighting with these little screws. And we have one more to cover. So we said like this. Oh, definitely. Now the Knight of Navy is going to get glued flat down on the back here. And we wanted, yes, we want the glue on that one. So Knight of Navy. Move that up just a bit. It's not perfectly straight. This is really, for me to even like this is, is a big thing, guys. And I know that might seem crazy to some of you, but for me, oh yeah. Um, it is not my normal cup of tea. So I'm going to wrap this around. I really want this frayed. I want to fray that more. I want it spread out more. Looks like it came apart. That won't work. So let's start again. There we go. Just gonna wrap it around. and put some scotch tape on it. Hold all of the good stuff on the back, maybe, if it doesn't, if it quits sticking to me. And then we're gonna put, oh, so, so cool. We're gonna put some dimensionals on it. on the right side. So I'm going to gather this little bit up there and put my dimensional there. And this piece is going to come over here and help hold all of that good stuff on the back so it doesn't come off. But all these little hairy fibers are just going to add to the card. Little pit bit of my scotch tape is there. I don't want that. Hang it out. So, oh my goodness! I'm so excited! And our cute, cute little bunny. Let's give him a little neck decoration. Shall we? No, yes, maybe. 
wonder if I could tie a tiny little bow with this. A bow maker would work, wouldn't it? But I don't know if it would have the same effect I want. With all these little fibers of the twine when you take it apart. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Trim that off and that off. And now I can get all of that off of the desk. And Mr. Bunny is going to go up. Ah! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Mr. Bunny. You need some dimensionals. So I'm going to stick a bit here. And this little crumb cake was stamped with, um, my goodness, Early Espresso was my bunny. He was stamped onto the crumb cake. So this is just, mm, love it. So there is our little bunny. We're going to put him right there and my bow I need a glue dot right on his wee little neck and then we'll stamp happy Easter in Mary Merlot on the inside we can pull make our little bow a little smaller Oh my goodness, guys. Look how adorable that is. And all from this. Oh, it would have done really well to maybe add a little early espresso along here. And we'll do that on our second card. On a card this uh, rustic looking, I would not add any rhinestones or anything on it. I think all that twine is, speaks for itself. Very grassy and like an Easter basket. So, early espresso, where are you hiding? No, Mary Merlot. That's what we're stamping in. Will Happy Easter fit on the inside in here? Oh, it will. It will. So, we're going to stamp, because I now I want to put another bunny on here. Move that aside. Happy Easter. Love it. Um... Or maybe I can add. No, those are all the same. I'm like, do I have an, you could add one of the other bunnies. This is the stamp set. That would be really cute. Stamped on the inside. But we can stamp that on our envelope. If I can find my envelope now. Here it is. I know what to do. All right. Mary Merlot. This little bunny is the cutest little floppy-eared little rabbit. So we are going to grab him. Do I have anything to put him on? Because I got blocks. I uh, have to bring out the great big ones I don't use very often. So we're going to add him with the early espresso. We can even add him to the bottom of the card. The ideas that go through my head. So we are going to, we're going to put the whole bunny here. We are just going to put all of him on there. We're going to open our flap up and put his sweet little face on the back. Yum! And then we're going to do a little peekaboo bunny right here in the bottom corner. Oh! I love it when an idea, I get to see my actual idea come, but I now I really wish I would have sponged some along there. So card number two, we are going to do just that. I'm not going to close that up because we're going to need it. Um, card number two, like I said, is the larger version of this card. So let's stamp what we're going to put on the card and Mary Merlot. Let's stamp them. So we have enjoy all the moments for one. 
And we have um, Happy Easter. Did I have a different one? Happy Easter. I thought I had a different sentiment. Nope. Okay. So it's a new day. Is it? There we go. So that stamping is done. Mary Merlot out of the way. And we have to, let's go ahead. I don't think we're going to punch the other ones, but let's see if we can punch the edge just to add. Uh, just to add that little bit more of texture and look to the card. It actually is easier after you punch what you want on there. <laughs> I mean punch. Stamp what you want. It's easier to punch away the excess and not worry if you're going to have room for what it's going to say. Like I said, they're not all going to be even. We started out with the same size. If you want them all to be even, don't punch them. Um, or punch them all together. But for this card, the way it's the rusticness and the offset of it, I think it goes really well. So here we have that double embossed image. We're going to move those aside so they don't get wet. We're going to bring back that water pen and go along the edge. The more the water, the easier the cardstock is to tear. I'm going to flip it over and do it on the back. Get more water coming out of the water pen. Water painter, whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm going to hold it up here, and I am going to pull towards me. That didn't get hardly any water right there in that spot, apparently. It was a bit tough. Or I didn't come in far enough. Or it's drying too fast because now it's much easier to remove pulling up towards me is how I do it I know some people do it differently it's up to you on what is comfortable and what look you like so once again we're gonna go to the opposite side lots of water lots of water You don't need one of these to do this. A simple paintbrush will do. It just makes it so much easier to tear. Oh, you know what, be darling, is to fletch this with a toothbrush with some of that dark early espresso or Mary Merlot. Hmm. The thoughts that go through my head y'all as I create, it's like, whoa, I can add this. I can add this little bit. Let's see. And I think we are going to add that just because I'm thinking of it. Okay. So there, oh, I love that. Dry up my water. So, remember I said we're going to, I had an idea. So, let's see. I need an ink block. You don't have to do it this way, but it works for me. And I need some water. I wonder if the toothbrush will go in this. No. No, it does not go in there. Okay. 
I just want to get my toothbrush wet. So it will work that way. I got these little glass spray bottles at Target. They were great. My daughter and I are very much getting rid of plastics. So now this is going to go everywhere when you do this. But the look is awesome. Look at that color. Ooh, I wonder, do I dare do it to the other one? Because I just think that's gorgeous. So where's the first card? Yes, we're going to do this. So just because it's going to add so much, guys. Look at that. I love it. Okay. Now I've got a red finger. I'm going to wipe this off on my towel. That will have to go in the house and get thoroughly cleaned. All right. You want a sneak peek now at that gorgeous? Look at that. The difference is amazing. Woo! I love it when it comes together. So... Here is our torn card, and I said we were going to sponge, so I've got a lot of my darker sponge daubers. Let's see, what color do we think this is? That is a green. Must be Mossy Meadow. What about this one? I need to label them. That's another Mossy Meadow. I know I had lots of those. What about... That's another green. Green. Tell what cards I like to do green with, right? Uh, this one looks... Okay. We are going to use... We use Sahara Sand, so we're going to go with Sahara Sand. Same color as our cardstock. Load up our sponge daba. And we are now going to take that edge. It's the same color ink. And you can hear that thump, 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 thump. Just like a rabbit thumping his foot, right? Oh, love it. Go all the way around all four corners. Four corners, four edges. Thump, thump, thump. And thump. <laughs> Thumper. You guys remember that old movie? We used to cry all the time. Every time. Tell you a cute little story is um, back when Disney released their new release of Pinocchio like 10 years ago. I don't know. My mother called me up. She's like, honey, she's like, I just saw in the grocery store that Disney released Pinocchio. She's like, do you have it? And I said, yes, mom. I said, I did see that in the store and Russell bought it for me. She's like, honey, she's like, because if you didn't have it already, I was going to have to send it to you. She's like, do you remember when you were little? And she's talking when I'm five or six. She's like, and every summer when we would take you kids to the Bishop, where we lived in Bishop, California, we would take you guys to the theater to see the Disney sto shows and when it was Pinocchio every year Alice you would sit there and cry your eyes out when Pinocchio got swallowed by the whale <laughs> I'm like yes mom I know I've heard this story a hundred times you know I was terrible about Pinocchio and she's like and your father would tell you now now little Alice you know that Pinocchio is going to get out of that whale. Why are you crying? And um, I would. I would cry every year when I saw Pinocchio get swallowed by the whale. It just devastated me. <laughs> and my mom, oh, love her, miss her very much. But that was the best thing ever was her telling me she wanted to make sure I had that Pinocchio movie. And she, she's like, now yeah, when you watch that, don't you dare go crying because you know he's going to get out of that whale. <laughs> Just a little funny story. Uh, 
So I love that that is sponged, but now I want to sponge. Ooh, that is really nice. Where's my sponge dauber? See, y'all, I put things back and I was like, I need it still. This is the one. Yes. So I'm going to take this and now I'm going to go around of that. Ooh. Love it. I forgot sometimes how much I enjoyed doing cards like this. Really take your time on, you know, sometimes in my videos it's like I worry about time, but this one I'm, I'm not because I am really just enjoying the creative process and seeing oh my goodness I do love it so I didn't put it back in there just in case I needed it this needs a little more glue and I don't know if it's because it might be a little damp but see how it's double embossed that we're gonna you're not even gonna see that especially with all that speckling from the Mary Merlot so next are these pieces and I want to get them laid out how I have them. Because I need to adjust them some. So this one needs to come down. like so like so and this is so out of my wheelhouse but I'm really liking the look of this we got it we got it you can see how they did their little thing that's what I was going for oh really really nice and you know what? I think I'm going to wrap the twine around the card this way. I am. So I'm going to lay these down. Do I want them on dimensionals? I don't think so. I don't think they need to be. So we're going to start with the bottom one. Ooh, and the bottom one is this one. Make sure I get the pattern right. So I'm going to tuck it up there there's that one bring this one yep next one please Yikes, stuck to my own finger, got glue on there. Oh, it goes this way, doesn't it? Yes. Almost had a really big faux pas. Sticking to me. If I didn't have glue on me, I guess. There we go. Last one. Could have done a little closer to there, but oh my gosh. So next. Like I said, take that twine. We're not going to dismantle the twine this time. Maybe I just want to unravel it a bit. I am going to open this up. And instead of wrapping it around individuals, we are going to wrap it 
I need more. I'm going to tie a big bow right here. Like three times. So one. Oh, perfect. Twice. We're going to do it twice. And I'm going to get lots of string here. And tie this all together around there because we want it roughly in the center. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Where's my little rabbits? Anybody see those little guys running around? There's one. We needed two of them. Okay. <laughs> Let me check the ground. Oh, if I could talk like Elmer Fudd, I would. <laughs> okay, there is my rabbit. And y'all know, I already told you, I had some I was playing. I was punching these suckers out. Didn't think about uh, stamping them. It's just punching the rabbits out. So let's see if I can use this. Look good, guys. Look good. Yes. Looks good. And not bad. So, need to close this up because that's all we needed the early espresso for. And then, if you noticed on my little bunny, he has really pink um, ears and a little bit here. And how I did that, I'm going to show you. I used like a 20 year old blender pen and I'm not kidding on the age of this sucker it's been forever so I'm picking up some of that Mary Merlot I'm gonna tap it off here and I am going to lightly because I liked the lighter look of it do his ears pick up a little bit more and then I picked up a little bit more and I did a little bit for a little nose. And then I did in here. And then we're going to go over this. Oh, that's a really cute little cheeker. So in there. Oh, cute. I want a little bit more color in there. Okay. So I need to clean my blender pen off. Not sure where, I'm not sure where things have gone. I don't want to wrap it up on these. I'm like looking for my scotch paper. All right. I'm going to stick that aside so I don't get it anywhere. Now I have a white gel pen. And here I am just highlighting. Sometimes I have to start it off on here. I'm just highlighting a few areas on this rabbit with this gel pen. And I'm just scribbling like back and forth. And I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna give a little mark on the nose. And then I'm gonna come in here and give him some white tufting even on top of our cheeks. And I'm doing little tiny swirls with this gel pen, just little swirls all down the underside of his belly. We're going to give him some little socks. And I'm going to come up here a bit, a little here, here, a little on the side, just down, highlighting some little areas on him. And it it just adds and of course nice big cotton tail for his bottom so repeat so and each one the where I place this is going to be different it's just how I roll with it so here we go a little dot for his nose in his cheekers 
and you can even do a little white in his eyeball there. Ooh, that is cute. So, little swirls down his underside and his little socks on his feet. And there's no <laughs> technique. And now this is just me. And you can see, I told you every time I do it, I do it a little different. It's just your eye and what you like on his bottom over here. And then swirls for the cottontail. And that is our little bunny. And he is going up on dimensional, or they are going up on dimensionals. So let's see. Cross there. Cross there. there and I was so trying not to put in an order until April and that's just not going to happen. Just not going to happen. But I love this bunny. So our bunnies Oh, I think we only needed two of these, but I got three. So let's see. Bunny number one is here. Bunny number two is up in this area. And nope, we're going to use all three. So Happy Easter is going to go here. Enjoy all the little moments. Oh, yes. And there, and we're going to glue these straight down, but then I got to do some more fletching because these don't have any on it. So it's a new day. Happy Easter. Really, really cute. And so out of my wheelhouse as far as the placement of all these scraps and they're being kitty wampus. So I'm, I know this is a long card, tall, so hopefully y'all can see it, but, oh, nailed it. Yes, I think I did. I'm very proud of myself. Still think it's funny that this is not what I came in <laughs> to work on, but sometimes that happens and I am going to cut my little strings on my bow a bit more and toothbrush time I need a little water again so let's see that should be enough to do it and I'm going to use from the block I'm going to open this up And I'm going to flex over again the entire card. Love it. Got to clean off my fingers. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. And of course, our envelope, right? Um, let's see. Our envelope, the envelope please. Um, where's our darling little bunny? We are going to do him. Full bunny. And repeat our little bunny head. Super, super cute. And we are going to put him also on the inside of our card. This one, I'm not putting anything in there right now. Probably just write a big message in it. But, so, 
This is card number two. Both inspired in casing this one little card out of the catalog. That's what we were doing. And card number one. So hopefully you guys can see them. And they are my versions of this little card. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking with me. And um, I hope you give something like this a try. Step out of your comfort zone and play with the papers you have and the DSP you have and try new things. It is so much fun. So I want to tell you guys thank you. Um, please, if you would like to receive one of my cards, um, please send me your email address. Just a quick little email saying, um, I want to be on your list. Um, the email address is aliceseraphin1969 at gmail.com. And I'm going to start getting those ready for March. March's cards will be Lucky Clover cards. I love that set. So those will be the cards that I'll be mailing out. And like I said, it's just my way of saying thank you to you out there in YouTube land. So come back and visit me in my wonderland. Bye-bye now.